Hi everyone, um, I'm Ollie Larkin and um, my job is actually research support programmer at the University of York in the music department there. Um, but yeah, I've been developing plugins for about 10 years and um, yeah, my most recent product is Virtual CZ, Casio CZ emulator. It came out sort of September before the one that's just gone. Um, but today I'm talking about Faust, um, which is not my creation and uh, most of what I'm talking about, I didn't create myself. There's just a little bit that I did. Um, but this is going to be a kind of crash course on, on Faust, basically. So Faust is a, a very nice programming language for audio DSP. And I've been using it for a couple of years. Uh, I use it alongside C++ and MaxMSP. I'm going to give you a brief overview of the language and introduce a couple of different workflows, um, so ways that you can use Faust with Juice or whatever you use. Um, and these are going to use some of the existing Faust tools, including some new ones which are based on LLVM. And I'll also show you a, a Juice module that I've made which allows you to JIT compile Faust code inside a Juice project. So what is Faust? Well, it's a domain-specific functional programming language for audio DSP. It's created by Jan Orle, um, and it was first released in 2002. So it's quite mature at this stage. Um, Jan develops Faust with his colleagues at Gram, which is a state-funded center for music research in Lyon in France. And as well as the team at Gram, uh, there are many international contributors to the project, um, including Julius Smith at Stanford, who's made a very nice uh, library of DSP um, building blocks, which is really, really high quality. Um, so the Faust compiler is really a code generator or a transpiler. So you write your, your faust.dsp file, which is a, a text file, and um, the compiler converts the Faust code to a variety of other languages. So you can do C++, but you can also do um, ASM.js and some other things. Um, in addition to this, it comes with a large collection of scripts and what are called architecture files to compile the Faust code directly to various binary formats. So you can make a MaxMSP object or a VST plugin by calling a particular script. The compiler is GPL licensed and works on a variety of platforms. And the code that you generate using the compiler, it inherits the license of any libraries you may have used. Um, but typically, you can use it in closed source projects. Um, lots of the libraries are kind of BSD style, M MIT liberal licenses. So a bit of a caveat here, I'm not a computer scientist, so don't ask me any hard questions about functional programming, but um, basically I should explain roughly what it is. Um, functional programming is a, a different programming paradigm to what we might traditionally use uh, in more common things like C++. And essentially, you don't deal with state. So um, unlike imperative languages, um, you don't assign values to variables. And a function should always return the same y value for an input x. Functional programming has been around for quite a long time. But it's recently gained popularity. It's got a lot of potential for um, parallel processing, which is obviously very important on modern multi-core CPUs, and it offers possibilities for some aggressive optimizations that don't exist with imperative languages. Also, the, the kind of expressivity of the code um, in languages such as Haskell and Clojure have made it very popular with live coders. So a Faust program describes a signal processor, a mathematical function that's applied to an input signal and then output. Of course, you can also generate a signal with no inputs. And a Faust program should have, as a bare minimum, a process function. It's like the main function in a C program. So the, the program here, have I got a mouse pointer? No. OK, the program on the left here um, is just describing a, a program that does nothing. It just passes input to output. And this underscore is like the kind of signal identity. Um, here's a block diagram, which um, 
Faust kindly generates for you. Um, the Faust language is, is all about describing block diagrams. And um, it's kind of like an electrical circuit diagram or a signal flow diagram. You express your block diagram as a textual expression and you compose different expressions to, to make a signal processor. And I find it, it really helps with Faust to think very visually about what your block diagram is going to look like. So this is a, a screen capture of my application PMIX, which I've developed using Juice. Um, and it uses the Juice module that I'm going to talk about in a bit. Um, I'm just demoing it now because it's quite nice because you can see the, uh, the block diagram um, being displayed as the, the code is written or compiled. Uh, so let's play this. So ignore the bit at the bottom for the moment. Um, I've got a basic uh, mono program that does nothing. I've used a parallel composition, which is that comma, to make it stereo. And then I can make it three channels. Um, now I'm going to do some processing on those signals. So multiply the middle one by 0 0.5. And I'm going to maybe speed that up a little bit. I oh, know I can't. So the comma is a a way of composing two, um, two signals or two expressions together. There's, there's a few other composition operators, which is on the next slide. Um, just to show you one of the libraries being used, I'm pulling in uh, oscillator.lib, and I'm going to use a, a sine wave oscillator that's defined there. And there should be some audio now. It should be a sine wave, but my uh, sound card's a bit broken, so I think that's why it's uh, <laughs> not a very good sine wave. Um, so, yeah, just to show you, this has created a one parameter on this uh, volume control. I changed the um, selection to this other um, node here, and that this one's got a, a single parameter with a volume control, and it's using that to make a, a multiply and a, a gain. So the composition operators, you've got that comma for parallel composition. You've also got um, a sequential composition, which is what's going on here with A going into B. Uh, split composition is going from a small number of signals to more. Um, merge is the opposite of that. Recursive is one that gets used all the time in audio DSP. Um, if you're doing IAR filters or an accumulator, for instance, um, you want to use that one. And of all of the kind of compositions, the way of composing expressions in Faust, this is the one that's very easy to get wrong and uh, tear your hair out trying to fix bugs with. Uh, as well as these operators, you've got lots of primitives in the language, so built-in um, kind of uh, code that you can use. And you've got numerical primitives, which can be floats or ints. You can choose whether your floats are single precision or double precision a load of mathematical operators, comparison operators, all of the kind of things that you might be used to in um, a programming language. Um, you've also got specific operators for dealing with delays. Um, these are some of those. And uh, some here for selecting certain signals. You can also do um, foreign functions. Uh, so you can uh, include a um, C, C or C++ uh, header file or source code file. And there's also um, primitives for UI elements. So Faust has pretty basic functionality for specifying a UI. It doesn't let you import bitmaps or do any vector drawing. Instead, you specify a type of control and the layout. Um, and this one of the architecture files that you might use um, will interpret it somehow. So this screenshot here is uh, a Qt application that's built with Faust, and there's an architecture for going to a Qt app and uh, specifying sliders and the fact it's a horizontal layout, a vertical layout for each strip, this kind of thing. So you can have sliders, meters, uh, checkboxes, and you can supply metadata to these uh, UI elements. 
And you might use that to turn a slider into a dial, or you might um, link up a MIDI CC or an OSC parameter to that uh, slider. Some of the libraries that come with it, um, yeah, there's all sorts of things here. And one I'm particularly fond of is this instrument.lib, which is um, a port of lots of uh, physical modeling algorithms from the Synthesis Toolkit. So some of the ways you might use this, the kind of traditional way of using Faust is on the command line. And um, this line up here would be the kind of command I might use if I wanted to convert a Faust.dsp file into a, um, a fully encapsulated C++ file with all the source code necessary inlined in order to insert it into another project. There's a few uh, command line options that get commonly used here. And one to note is this dot .vec at the bottom, which um, generates C++ code that should be more easy for the uh, C++ compiler to auto-vectorize. There's also a dash omp um, flag, which uses OpenMP multi-threading. Um, I haven't actually tried this myself. This is some C++ that might be generated from such a command. Um, in fact, it's just the part for the kind of DSP processing. There would also be some other stuff for the UI interaction. And you can see you've got a, an init function and a compute function. So you could quite easily integrate this class into a, um, a Juice plugin. This is like a block process function. You've got sample size and buffers for your input and output samples. It's very common in this kind of um, C++ audio world. Uh, so architecture files are C++ boilerplate code that interface with the Faust DSP class uh, and interface it to a particular API, such as VST or AU or the Maxim SP SDK. And if you've got a particular platform that you want to interface Faust with, you can write your own architecture file. It also comes with a load of scripts, which allow you to go directly to a, a binary file. Um, there's absolutely loads of different things that you can um, export. And there's also some of these scripts to go to a kind of automatic documentation, for instance, like a PDF file, which will explain your, your algorithm. So some of the more recent developments on Faust uh, use LLVM to provide an embeddable compiler. And to, to get this stuff, you have to check out the um, Faust2 branch on the Git repository. Um, but there are also a couple of um, things that have been made with it. Perhaps at the moment, this is the easiest way to get into Faust. It's a, a standalone app built with Qt called Faust Live. And um, yeah, it's, uh, you, you use it alongside a text editor. And whenever you edit your .dsp file, it JIT compiles it and uh, hooks it up to the Jack audiograph. Another uh, thing built on this um, libfaust is the faustgen max external. This is how I got into Faust. Um, and uh, if you use MaxMSP, this is a very nice way of integrating it with, um, with Faust. There's also an online compiler. Um, so this is pretty cool because in, uh, in Leon, they have a server running which has got all of the kind of dependencies for all the different platforms already installed on it. So if you want to export your Faust DSP to an Android um, project and you don't have all of the Android libraries installed, you can use the online compiler and it will give you a zip file which you can then um, put on your Android device. So I'm going to talk about the strengths and weaknesses, which is maybe a little bit subjective and it's perhaps not an exhaustive list. So from my point of view, I think Faust's got a very nice, concise and expressive syntax. So you can do some really powerful and complicated routings um, with very little code. It's got a very quick, quick workflow, so you can um, just change quite um, complicated DSP very quickly and then have, it, uh, have the results very quickly. Um, you can easily port a project to a different platform. So I, if I've got something 
I've been making as a Maximus P external, and some one day I decide I want to use that as a VST plugin. <coughs> it's it's very quick to to change the, the kind of binary format. The performance is actually very good um, when you compare it to handwritten code, um, with a few caveats on the next slide, um, and the optimization, the auto vectorization stuff is pretty cool. There's also a vast library of high quality DSP included, and you can generate documentation and diagrams directly from your Faust code. Weaknesses, pretty major one. Currently, everything is always on. Um, obviously, when we're doing real time DSP, we want to switch bits of codes on and off um, very often. And um, this is something that Faust isn't great at at the moment, but there is an experimental branch on the, on the Git repository that addresses it. Another big problem is that you can't do multi-rate processing. Again, there's an experimental branch, and hopefully this will be in Faust one day. The syntax is pretty complicated, and it's a steep learning curve. And the errors that you get from the compiler are sometimes extremely cryptic with a you know, half a page worth of text that you have to try and decipher. So I guess these slides will be online. Um, I'll put them on my blog anyway. And uh, if you're interested in the language, here are some links that I recommend to, to get into it. Down the bottom, this was uploaded last week. There's a Stanford have just done a kind of video uh, or online course on, on Faust, which is very good, including a three-hour lecture by Julia Smith. So I'm running out of time, but quickly on to the Juice module that I've made. So this is based on the Faust Gen Maximus MSP external, but I've kind of rewritten it in um, trying to use some best practices from Juice. Still some work to do on that, to be honest. Um, it provides a Juice audio plugin instance that you can, uh, where you can JIT compile the DSP from Faust code. Uh, the parameters are based on the Faust UI specification, so every H slider will end up as a parameter. And eventually, it's going to show a, um, a generic kind of juice GUI based on that UI specification with all the layout sorted. Um, and there's a few supporting files, such as a Faust syntax highlighter for the juice code editor. Here's some basic usage. So I'm creating an instance, initializing it with some folders. Uh, the SVG files are written to disk, which is a little bit annoying. but um, you have to specify a folder where they're going to go. Uh, changing the source code and saying, yes, I want to compile it, generating those SVG files, and then doing the number crunching down here. So I've got a little bit of time left, and I'm going to talk about a few projects that I've been using Faust for. About a minute and a half left, actually. <laughs> OK. <laughs> My time is slightly different. Uh, so one of those is a physical model of the Indian Tambora. I've been interested in doing physical modeling uh, for quite a long time. And this, these Indian instruments like the Tambora and the Sitar are things that haven't really been modeled satisfactorily. So um, I was very interested in Faust because there's some, some quite nice uh, filters and things that have been made at Stanford that um, are already there in the language to use. Also, that I've got a very complex kind of um, string coupling routing going on, and inside these string units, there's uh, lots of very parallel uh, audio processing. And to express that in Faust is just a tiny amount of code, this kind of thing. Um, and anyway, there's some sounds on SoundCloud. I think it sounds pretty good, if I may say so. Uh, the next thing is this: what I showed you earlier. It's PMix version 2, the original was in MaxMSP, and it's yet another project based on the Juice demo host. Um, it's got, you can make these nodes on the audio graph as uh, JIT compiled Faust code, and then you can select parameters to interpolate in this graphical window. Last slide. Uh, Lastly, I've been using it to make a lot of uh, patches for this owl pedal, which we've got some people in the audience, I think, involved with that project. 
Um, and it's a really nice way to, to write code for this. Um, there's an architecture file to go directly from Faust to, to the AL pedal. So those things are open source and GPL license, and you can find them on that GitHub page. Thanks very much. Have you got any questions? Um, can I ask that people have questions? Use a mic and I'll run around. Um, I think you've been using both Faust and other data flow languages like Pure Data and associated with other compilers like Heavy. Yep. What do you think, how would you compare the two approaches? Well, I think Heavy is a really cool project, um, but it's, uh, it's a subset of PD. And um, also, you know, I'm really into text-based programming languages these days. And uh, to express this kind of complex uh, signal routing that I've done with this Tambura model, for instance, that's uh, a lot of uh, wires in PD. And uh, to do it in Faust is really you know, much more fun. So I think they're both great projects, um, and specifically for, for you know, newcomers to programming, the, the heavy project and using PD to make patches for the OWL is fantastic. Uh, but personally, I'm, I'm more into Faust at the moment. You do make me work for this, don't you? <laughs> Thank you. Um, since it is a functional language, I'm curious how you handle um, things like uh, debugging, you know, like console messages and also uh, global state or like parameters, mm -hmm. things like that? It's hard, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, what I like to just send signals out and record WAV files and that kind of thing. Um, you can't print to a console um, so easily. Um, and yeah, if you, if you type the code wrong, you do get errors from the Faust compiler, but sometimes they're very complicated ones. Does that kind of answer your question, or? Uh, I guess I'm wondering is how do you debug it? How do you step through? How do you debug it and stuff? Well, I just tend to try and simplify as much as possible. So taking out tiny bits of the the Faust code and running them on their own, seeing if they work, if they generate the correct block diagram. Um, yeah, it's it's not as easy as debugging C++. I saw one um, code example uh, with um, the Citar emulating, no, sorry, the Tambura, mm -hmm. um, and it had pretty much all the um, elements that you showed. Uh, could you explain a little bit that line of code? What? Um, yeah, would you like to expand a little bit what, what part in this text does what? I would like to know. <laughs> <laughs> Asking the simple questions. <laughs> I did actually have to get some help with this feedback routing from the guy who wrote the language, so <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> um, so essentially this coupling matrix is this unit here. Um, we have some things running in parallel. So if I look at my comments, hopefully that's going to remind me what each bit does. Um, here we have the, uh, where is it? This is running the, the excitation in parallel. So we've got four of these. N strings is set to four. The coupling matrix also gets past this N strings variable for four. Here we are running. So this, this operator here is how you, um, you cut signals. So. The complex feedback routing, actually inside this string, I've got two waveguides. And this is because one waveguide can't feed back into, there's, there's string coupling, right? So I need to go to the other strings, but I can't make a, a, a loop, a total loop. So I have to feed all the left-hand waveguides into the right-hand waveguides. So I'm cutting the signal here with this uh, exclamation mark. That's what this line is doing, feedback only the right waveguide. Um, this is the 
parallel uh, pan signal processing. I'm trying to find where the actual string has gone. I didn't want to do this, but it's not a short answer, is it? No. <laughs> there is quite a bit of code. That, that's only the very, very top bit. Um, I can show you the whole thing later if you're interested.